It was halfway through the Civil War in 1863 as the end of June approached. The Confederate Army has been making its way up north, invading Pennsylvania while trying to push back the Union Army. One of the Confederates' brigades had captured Wrightsville in York County and planned to take over the state capital in Harrisburg and planned to also take Philadelphia. But there was one area that was a problem. The problem was being able to cross the Susquehanna River to get into Lancaster County to plan their next military operation. The only way to get past the river was through a wood-covered bridge from Wrightsville to the town of Columbia in Lancaster on the other side. The name of that bridge was the Wrightsville Bridge, and it was around a mile long over the Susquehanna. Led by a rebel brigadier general, John Brown Gordon, who had around 1,800 troops under his command and was ready to trample the Union and fulfill his mission. While over on the other side in Columbia, militiamen were stationed ready to fight, vowing to blot the Confederate forces from advancing. Federal soldiers that had already fought this force in York fell back and joined the rest of the other soldiers in Lancaster to post up and get ready to fight once more. An African American militiamen force was stationed there as well, from Camp William Penn, which had 1,500 men ready to fight as all soldiers stood in their entrenchments. When the battle started, the Confederate Army started with artillery fire, taking out massive amounts of casualties and having the Union side almost impossible to tend to. With that, Federal soldiers fled into the town of Columbia, but not without keeping their promise. While fleeing, the Union decided that the best cause of action would be to blow up a section of the bridge behind them so they could deny the rebels access to the other side. Unfortunately, this plan did not work. Upon the explosion, the bridge didn't crumble as was expected, leaving an opening for the Confederacy to advance. So the next step was to take place. Union soldiers who were still in the area were ordered to then burn the bridge, giving no way of anyone being able to cross it. While the flames were raging, Confederate forces decided to still go forward and try to extinguish the flames, and to keep Wrightsville from coming into flames. They were only successful in saving the town. The bridge, though, was totally destroyed and pieces of wood on fire fell into the mighty Susquehanna. The next day, Gordon's brigade was to retreat, failing his mission. But this battle set the war for its next battle, Gettysburg. The Columbia Bank and Bridge Company sent an appeal to the government to get reimbursement for the damages for the bridge. But the government decided never to pay it, and in today, it is estimated that the bridge damages cost around $170 million. Eventually, the bridge would be sold to the Pennsylvania Railroad for $57,000. But if you decide to go on Google Maps right now, and you look next to the Veterans Memorial Bridge, that is on Route 462, they can still be seen. And if you go to Columbia, PA, you can still see them in person since they're pretty easy to spot out. Years after this historical event, the town of Columbia wanted to honor it. And what they did was have a festival called the River Fest where they post a burning bridge challenge every year, along with a reenactment. The event, which was real, was actually written into a book with fictional characters and a fictional story following the real events, chronologically, called Flames Across the Susquehanna by Glenn Banner. Well, that's it for this video. Leave a like if you can, and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you on the next video.